So if we look at optimizing the squat, one of the things that most people are seeking is a way to get more range of motion. So if we look at Adam here and he goes through the squat here and he goes and we see where is his active range. An active range is gonna be before this butt starts to tuck or there's any extension at the low back or rounding. So if Adam comes up just a tiny bit, that's probably the end. So if our goal is full squat, what we want is maximum flexion at the hip and at the knee. There's still some room for improvement there. We could get more range of motion, more lengthening of the quad if we weren't limited by Adam's structure, which in this case is if I try to push him forward, he can't because his ankle, that's just, that's just stretches his ankle can get. He would need to be able to drive that further forward in order for him to get more of a stretch here. If he tries to actually get that range now, what you'll see is his butt has to tuck under. That means now the load is transferring from his glutes onto his lower back. So if he comes up really slow, you'll see that the first thing that happens is his spine has to extend. So it's quads and low back instead of quads and glutes bringing him out of that squat. So a simple solution to that is let's go ahead and elevate the heel. So if Adam steps back onto the wedge and we look and see what type of range of motion we can get here, we're gonna see that he'll be able to get a little bit more. So if he goes ahead and comes down to the bottom, now the wedge is providing essentially an assist, making it overcome his ankle mobility limitations by picking up the heel and driving it foot forward. Now he's able to get full range of motion here and fairly good range of motion at the hip. The other thing this does is it gives us the ability to place more load on the quad. The limitation some people will have, as you see Adam's got kind of an open stance here, he needs that open stance in order to get this range of motion at the hip. If he were to stand up and bring his feet narrow for me, okay, and then try and go through the squat, what you'll see is he's not able to get as much of a stretch at the glute now. So now he's limited on range of motion because of the hip. So when that is the case, the way that we can overcome that is we have to open up the hips and go wide. So we, here we have that straight forward kind of like parallel foot position on the wedge, which is gonna be ideal when our goal is emphasizing quads. So if Adam were to squat here, drive his knees forward, he's going to be able to get a decent amount of range of motion around the knee, but he's going to be limited at the hip. So he's not gonna be able to squat lower than this without rounding at the back because he needs to open his stance. You can even see his knees kind of want to go out from where they are now. So go ahead and stand up, Adam. So if we open up his stance, okay, and we have those toes pointed out, and let's go ahead and squat through. This is the position that's going to give Adam the most range of motion at both of those joints because he's able to actually get full range of motion at the hip and the knee. The problem is now his foot, if you could imagine the wedge is like this and his foot's at an angle, his foot is kind of being tipped in. And what that does is it creates a rotation. So his tibia is being kind of rotated this way. Bottom of his foot's falling in. It creates this issue where it's hard to stabilize the knee. So now we have some individual wedges and with these we're actually able to rotate them, externally rotate them to match what Adam's ideal angle would be for his foot. So if you were to look at the angle of your feet when you were trying to do a full squat on the floor, that's essentially the same angle that we would want these to be at. With this, now the wedge is actually going to serve as a functional piece for the movement and it's gonna make his execution easy because as he goes down, because his foot is now out, it's going to drive his knee right along with his foot. With the traditional wedge where it's slanted this way, it's gonna try and drive his knee in a little bit, whereas this is gonna push it right in line with the toe. So if Adam does a couple reps here, you'll see that it's very, very smooth. The squat becomes almost thoughtless because everything is flowing in line with the way the joints are supposed to function. It's very easy to stabilize. He doesn't have to counterbalance that tibial rotation than he would on a wedge that's only going in one plane. So if we're looking at optimizing the full squat where we're maximizing hip and knee, being able to open up really provides more stability and is gonna be great if we really wanna load this position. If we're just thinking about maximizing quads, well, then for some people, if they don't have a lot of hip limitations, they could use a traditional wedge, but they would go back to that more parallel foot position. For those of you guys that don't have 
a very long torso or you have really long femurs and you find that you still have a hard time getting down on a traditional wedge, a wedge like this where you can actually open up is likely the thing that's gonna fill in that gap for you. So this is especially important for people that have short torsos. They find themselves leaning forward very soon in the squat. Being able to have something like this is gonna accommodate for that hip mobility and still allow you to get more quads in the movement.